This is Isaac Newton. And this is Albert Einstein. And this is called Principia, a work published by Newton in 1687. Remember the year. In this work, he presented the laws of motion and the laws of universal gravity. Then 200 years later, this guy was born. In 1915, he published his work called General Theory of Relativity. In this work, he apparently corrected Newton's work. But did he? And if he corrected the faulty laws given by Newton, why do we still study Newton's laws in schools, even before we study those given by Einstein? This is the physics syllabus in NCRT for class 11 and 12 for a science student in India. Unit 1 – Physical World and Measurement Unit 2 – Kinematics Unit 3 – Laws of Motion Then there is Work, Energy and Power Motions of System and Particles and Rigid Body So here is a fun one – Gravitation Only Newton and no Einstein Weird, right? Why if we already know that there are corrections made by Einstein why do we study Newton first? To answer this question, first, let me tell you a story. The year is 1781. At this time, humanity only knows of six planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. William Herschel, while looking through his homemade telescope, observes that one star in particular moves a bit weirdly. At first, he thought it was a comet, but later he corrected his observations and identified it as the seventh planet, Uranus. Now we had seven planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. But there's something peculiar about this planet. In 1821, Alexis Boward published the astronomical table for the orbit of Uranus. This table predicted the future positions based on Newton's law of motion and gravitation. But what the astronomers observed was weird. Uranus didn't follow the trajectory that was calculated using Newton's laws. Some people thought that maybe they have found the limitations to Newton's laws. There were irregularities both in planet's elliptical longitude and its distance from the sun. Some people thought that since Uranus is so far away from the sun, maybe the laws of Newton didn't work there. Maybe they have found the limitation. Here comes a man called John Couch Adams. Adam thought that perhaps the observed data was correct. And at the same time, Newton's laws were also correct. But how come? He believed that there could be yet another planet near Uranus that could be achieving the orbit of Uranus. During his summer vacations, he started calculating the mass, the position, and the orbit of a hypothetical planet that could explain this outlier. Nowadays, we call this an inverse problem. In an inverse problem, we try to find the causal factors by calculating the set of observations produced by them. In simple words, we reverse engineer to find the cause by looking at the event itself. Meanwhile, a French astronomer, La Verrier, also made some calculations and determined a position for a hypothetical planet, similar to Adam. Since he could not convince any French astronomers to confirm his theory, he sent the results to Berlin Observatory in Germany. Astronomers there used their Fraunhofer telescope, which had a 9mm aperture. Within just one hour, and just by one degree of the calculations made by La Verrier, there sat the planet Neptune. This was the story of discovery of Neptune. So what's the moral of the story here? The moral of the story is, that Newton's law explains stuff. And honestly, practically everything that you can experience can be explained by Newtonian physics. But what we have found out during the course of scientific history is that science builds upon itself. What it means is that a set of observations that are verified and confirmed independently and systematically, taking out the bias and errors, are always valid. They actually become the law. Newton's laws are why we could send rockets to the moon and Mars. The wonders of science instead of its terror. Newton's laws are why we can design brakes of cars, place a satellite in orbit, or make any kind of jet in use. However, when we gain a deeper understanding of the nature of the universe itself, we expand the scope of observations. With the right context, we get the right set of laws, we can explain the right phenomena at the right time. For instance, Einstein's general theory of relativity explains the processes that occur in very very strong gravitational fields. The general theory of relativity improves our understanding of gravity. It says that rather than being a force between two bodies, as explained by Newton, gravity is rather a curvature of space-time itself. In the close vicinity of a star, where the gravitational forces are humongous, 
Newton's laws don't explain certain things. Let's take the example of Mercury. The planet closest to the sun. Mercury being so close to the sun deviates from Newtonian calculations because sun is so massive and have such a large gravitational field. But if we consider the space-time factor introduced by Einstein, the correction can be made for these errors. What that means is that Newtonian mechanics is a subset of a larger framework which can be explained by Einstein's general theory of relativity. It's not wrong. It's just that its application has its limits. And if you actually apply the general theory of relativity to the laws of physics in low gravitational fields, it actually becomes Newtonian mechanics. If you are considering a career in designing cars or rockets that can go to the moon or maybe even to Mars or other planets, Newtonian mechanics will be alright. But if you are interested in designing a spacecraft that can go to the edge of a black hole, you might benefit from a solid understanding of general theory of relativity. Oh, by the way, the general theory of relativity also fails at a center of a black hole, a place called singularity. But that's for another time to discuss. So the next time some frustrated high school student asks you, why do I have to study Newton when he was proven wrong? You now know what to say. Guys, if you like the content I'm making, please like and share this video. Also subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for getting notified for future videos. If there's any topic in particular you would like me to discuss here, please drop it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.